Hey what's up everyone, in this video today I'm going to show you how to use Blind to create a responsive 3D scene that can adapt to any screen size from desktop to mobile, so let's get into it. Alright so here we are in Splice, so for those of you who are not aware, Splice has a very big library of 3D assets that you can shoot for a lot of cool stuff like 3D object or scenes. So I find it very time saving because I don't need to create everything from scratch, I can just grab something from the libraries and build on top of it to create something unique. So for example, I can go to the shirt bar and search for something like the rooms and it give me some options. So we have a lot of cool scenes here, so let's go with this one. Alright, here we go. We have this very nice scene set up here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is to uh, do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm going to remove some object that we don't need to keep it um, very simple and minimal. So uh, maybe I don't need the table and just remove all of this thing here. And let's move this tree over to the left. Alright, so now I want to change the whole environment from daytime to nighttime. So let's click here to open this scene properties and change the background color to a very dark blue color like this. And then let's change the color of the floor. Uh, so let's select the floor right here and then go to the material. Let's select the last layer and change this gradient colors. Uh, so for the middle color, I'm going to go with orange. And the outer color will be also dark blue, so it could blend into the background. Uh, so now we have something like this, but the lighting is a little bit off. So let's go to the light uh, tab here and open the panel. And let's change the light color to dark blue as well. And also reduce the intensity a little bit like this. Uh, so next I want to create a light source for the lamp, uh, so let's click here and create a point light. Uh, Alright, so we have this really nice point light, so let's move it inside the lamp like this. And then let's turn off the lighting effects of this lamp material, so it could look a little bit more glowy. And then with this direction of light, I'm going to move it a little bit to the side. And then let's uh, increase the intensity and change the color to uh, a blue color like this so it could look a little bit more like an ambient lighting so also move it a little bit to the back and turn off a shadow because we don't need the shadow for this one and then let's change the color of this tree to be uh, something more blue and purple so it could match up with the whole color scheme of the scene Alright, so after a few adjustments, this is what we have. Um, so next thing I want to do is to add some more stuff into the scene so it can fill up the scene as well to make it look more lively. So let's open the library here and search for maybe some kind of animal, uh, maybe a dog. Like, uh, yeah, we have this really cute puppy here. So it looks like a Shiba Inu. Um, I know because I have one. Uh, so let's make it smaller and move it to the right. Uh, like this and you might notice that this 3d models of Shiba Inu is a little bit low res which is uh, totally fine because we can select all of the layer here and increase the subdivision level uh, for example like if we can select uh, some of these uh, just for demonstrate um, and then go to this uh, panel on the right and increase this subdivision modifier just increase it to one and then you can see it is improve the whole quality of the model like this so you can do the rest for the model to uh, make it smoother all right so next step we're going to make the scene responsive which means it will adapt to multiple screen size um, so if you click on this preview right here and then you turn on this button uh, here so it will switch into this view which is a uh, screen side preview mode where you can see how your 3D artwork will look like in different screen size. So now you can see that in mobile view, it almost crop out everything like the dark and you know the other things here. So what we want is the scene to adapt it to this screen size, and then we can see everything in this mobile view. All right. So let's go back here and let's try it with the dock so let's select the dock and then create a state so we have the base state and a state so with the state selected let's move the dock to the middle 
and then create an event and with this event let's select screen resize and um, so if we open this um, panel so we have two options horizontal and uh, vertical and down here we have the free breakpoint um, so to keep it simple i'm going to remove tablet uh, so we only have mobile and the second one will be desktop and from here you can select the logic so for mobiles it would be any anything smaller than 480 pixel and for desktop it should be anything more than uh, for cp1 so you can create you know any kind of different logic uh, uh, depends on your purposes right but for now i just want to keep it simple so we have this one right here so let's click here to create a transition for the mobile view open this all right so in here we're going to define what's going to happen if the screen size is smaller than 480 pixel right so we want the dock to switch to the state which is where it stay in the middle like this so uh, the target should be the dock and the first state should be current uh, this is really important um, and the second state will be state which is uh, exactly like this and transition should be maybe just really quick uh, like this and half second uh, that's it for mobile and let's click here to create a transition for desktop and click here to open it and same here a uh, target is a dog and uh, transition from current to uh, base state so for desktop we want it to move to the right like the original position all right so uh, i think we all set up so now let's give it a try so now you can see that it's working really well like this so desktop mobile like this so now all we need to do is just to apply the same process to the other uh, create the state for the tree and move it a little bit closer to the man right here and then you can even speed up the process by uh, copy the events that we just did from this dock right here and then just paste it to the tree but make sure to go back here and open this and switch the target to plant instead of dock same here switch to plant so now let's give it a try so mobile voila it's working like magic and the very cool thing is that if you create a camera like here add a new camera right here and you can even do the same for the camera right so, so i'm going to create two states for the camera so the first state will be this and the second state i wanted to zoom out so we can see everything more clearer uh, like this so i have two state this and this and let's select here and let's just pay the same event that we just did and open this and make sure that you switch the target to camera all right let's see so yeah this is what i'm talking about uh, really nice so with this you can have endless possibility of what you can do uh, with different screen size different device and finally you can go to export and adjust some play settings uh, so no logo uh, no orbit and zoom no and uh, give it a little bit of this um, orbit effect on hovers activity uh, five is cool and orbit limit so we will just let it swing horizontally um, all right and go back here and copy this link and update url and now you can go to any web builders framers webflow and just paste the link into the embed components so for example i have this layout right here in framers and all i have to do is just to paste the link of slide here and now just preview it and see how it's going to work with your website uh, so overall i think the feature is very handy and it's filled up the gap between 3d and web designs so one last thing i want to mention is that if you're working on a larger scale project now you can create a team and invite your team member into the project and then you can create a new file in this project or you can even add an existing file to your team project and the cool thing about this is that you can share the same access libraries to the whole teams and everyone in the team can go to the share access library 
and grab any components or object that they want to speed up the process. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you find this one helpful and I will see you in the next one.